two rather stylish perpetual motion machines. They say perpetual motion. In reality, they're electromagnetic pendulum systems that have a little bit of electronic circuitry that keeps kicking the pendulum as it passes the base of the unit. So let's open them up and take a look inside. Okay, let's explore it. Now, although these units look extremely similar to each other, these bases, the whole spacing is very slightly different. They weren't totally compatible for putting the two things, the two sort of swinging bits onto each other's base. And that makes me think that they may be from different manufacturers, although they're very similar. The gold one also has this uh, symbol raised in the molding, and also it's got a USB port, just in case you run a perpetual motion. Both of them, however, use two AA cells. And it's worth mentioning that the very earliest of these, and these go back a very, very long way. I mean, I saw these when I was a kid. I got one when I was a kid. Uh, and that was some considerable time ago. Um, and they used to use a PP3 9 volt battery back then. So let's take these covers off. I'll keep the covers separate, just in case they're not totally compatible. Are they similar? Not sure. Um, and, well, I could find out. I could try clipping this one onto there. Oh, doesn't quite fit. No, they're not compatible. Lovely. So I'll take out the energy cells for perpetual motion. And we'll open these cases. So I'll need a screwdriver. And a screwdriver bit. Let's go for this bit here. Oh, well, let's try that one. Is this going to fit? No, it's not going to fit. Let's try this one. Is this going to fit? Yes, it is. So let's pop these screws out, lift the cover off, and we see the kicker magnet. The AA cells are just connected in the series. They're linked across. Technically speaking, if you want to kick with less force, it might be viable. I'm not sure how well this would work to just use one of these holders if your ornament was just over zesty. Let's take a look inside the gold one and see if it contains any different circuitry. Watch me mix all these bits up. I'll put the little screws over into the black base. Well, I have to say, they're looking very similar so far. This one is a little sticker over the top. Uh, maybe that's to stop the metal plunger kicking up and down. Does it kick up and down? Oh, and this one also. Oh, I see what it is. This one here has a screw holding it in, and this one here is simply on pegs, and then that little bit of foam is to stop it rattling and clattering about inside. Okay. Right. Well, I shall take a picture of the back of this, uh, take some measurements of these coils, draw you a schematic, and we can explore these amazing perpetual motion machines. Okay, so let's explore. And both these ornaments have exactly the same circuit, but they have uh, differing windings, and it's quite odd, because the thickest winding isn't the highest resistance, as you'll see in a moment. So we have the power supply coming on the 6 volts, and the coil has three connections. It also has a fourth pin, which is purely to support the coil in the circuit board. It just it's part of the mechanical structure. And there is a classic little NPN transistor, Y1, um, NPN, and it basically has a low resistance winding. In this case, it's uh, 26 ohm, and then it's got a much higher resistance winding, which in this case varies between uh, let me just check, 1,211, oh, let's just write that, 1,211 ohms, uh, and the other one is 1,966 ohms. Quite a significant difference. Um, but the idea is that, uh, well, I'll show you in the schematic, uh, but before I show you the schematic, I shall show you the coils, because it's quite odd, the size difference. One moment, please. So here are the two coils next to each other, and with the black one has a much thicker uh, coil, and I'm guessing it's exactly the same form, or I don't think it's packed out in the middle. It looks like an identical construction. However, you'd think that this one being much thicker winding would have a higher resistance, but in reality, the gold one, which the gold ornament, uh, has a much 
thinner mass of winding and it makes me think that uh, this one may be 40 AWG um, which is one of the smaller enameled wire sizes and that if it was that would be about 570 millimeters it's a very thin wire 0 0.08 uh, millimeters super thin hair like wire very hard to measure it's on the edge of my calipers and I've not unwound these coils to actually check the sizes of them but then this one has a higher resistance for a larger coil which makes me wonder have they used an even finer wire for that or is this maybe even using a thicker wire just to make it easier to wind. I can imagine that in this scale of things that you're going to save a significant amount of copper by going for a smaller winding there, but it still seems to uh, have a valid effect. I will say that this one is quite a punchy uh, magnetic swing compared to this one. It's more subtle. Maybe that's what the difference is, that they tune it to the actual the effect required. Um, but let's take a look at the schematic. And here is the schematic. It's very simple. Let me explain what happens. I'll just make sure this is focused. Here are the four AA cells. Uh, the gold one also has a USB lead, and unfortunately it just smacks it straight across the AA cells, so I would recommend taking them out if you're going to uh, be using this. Although having said that, um, the 6 volt cells, uh, as the battery, the USB would uh, actually get a back feed from fresh cells, that's not necessarily a great thing. But um, mm, as the cells went down, it would just sort of take priority and it, I don't think it would try and back charge them, particularly because uh, they would be you know, floating up to 1.6 volts uh, when they were being fully charged, which you're not really supposed to charge alkalines, but, you know, uh, you can kind of have a slight effect to charge them, but it does risk the batteries exploding, which means it's not a great idea to charge them. Anyway, I've been, I'm totally digressed there, didn't I? Here is the transistor. They both use a Y1. And there's the high resistance winding, the high number of turns, which uh, is the feedback winding to the base. And there is the kick winding. What happens is as the magnet swings by, it uh, starts turning this transistor on. And when it does, that turns this coil on. And uh, as the current flows through this, it also couples magnetically to this one and it drives the base of the transistor on fully. And uh, at the point that the magnetic field has reached the maximum and it can't really build up the magnetic field any higher. It stops coupling current across to this one. The magnetic field starts collapsing, the transistor turns off, and uh, that uh, then creates a negative feedback, which turns the transistor off decisively. Now, I have experimented the past, and you can put a protection diode across here, because otherwise these transistors can see quite nasty spikes across them when it turns the coil off. I did scope one a while back and it was quite a, a violent waveform. It didn't seem to affect the operation of the swing when I put a diode across that coil. But they, I think they're going for the super cheapness when they just make it very, very basic. Okay, so now you've seen the schematic and uh, heard me ramble about batteries and reverse charging. Uh, in this case, I'd recommend taking the cells out if you're going to use it in USB. Use one or the other, but not both. I'll just uh, move that out of the way. That's a completely different video. But let me bring in the ornaments. Oh, they've stuck together because they have great big ceramic magnets. Can I get this off? Or is it glued on? It's glued on. Okay. Right, this one is the base bond. It's got a large ceramic magnet in it. And uh, there's another magnet here, and each of these balls has a small magnet of the opposing polarity, so that as it swings backwards and forwards, it kind of just, if it's fa if spinning fast enough, it will just basically spin past that. But as it swings, if it's kind of stationary, it will then bounce it, and it results in this spinning backwards and forwards as it's uh, rocking backwards and forwards. Quite a noisy one, this one. The other one is more subtle. This is quite a chunky big one, so I'm going to have to bring the focus up a little bit here. Hopefully that worked. Did that work? I'm going to do it again, just in case it didn't work. So this one comes kind of flat packed, and uh, it comes with these extra wires here. You can basically take all these things out because they're 
uh, just sort of springy and they go into the frame and the wire here that you get this sort of flat pack wire you get this as a sphere or this sort of rhombusidally type thing is that the correct word for that I don't often use words like that. Multi-sided, multi-faceted sphere. I, I kind of, I say I don't use that much, but really in uh, 3D printing, yes, you do. Uh, that quite a lot. But this one has the big ceramic magnet more visible down here. And uh, as it swings backwards and forwards, in this case, there's no magnetic influence, as far as I can see, over these things. It's simply the fact that uh, they're all slightly offset. Actually, I can see that you've also got the option of putting this in that. Oh, no, that's just got this little indent here, and the other one on the other side doesn't. So they've obviously had different consideration, different ideas. Or maybe they actually wanted to put a little magnet in there. But anyway, um, as this rocks backwards and forwards, it causes this to spin, and it seems to get into a pattern that it does keep spinning uh, continually, um, as it does so. It's quite good. I thought it would just sort of settle into a pattern as old ones did, that as it rocked backwards and forwards, it just basically had the same sort of pattern every time. But it does keep spinning all the time, which is quite interesting. So these things are classed as perpetual motion devices. They're not perpetual motion devices at all, uh, but that they were just styled as being a sort of mystical device, uh, but it's battery powered. Um, but they do use quite low current, um, and uh, as such, they're, they're visually quite appealing, but the novelty does wear off very quickly. If you have this swinging away in your house all the time, you'll find that you reach over and just bring it to a halt just to stop it. And if you do, theoretically, that should just sit there and not rock and not use any current because it's only when it's actually inducing current in the coil that it actually, with movement, that it should trigger it. But uh, they're interesting things. They're very much a blast from the past. And these ones, I mean, there's quite a wide range of them available on AliExpress and other platforms. And they're not that expensive. So they might be a good base for your own sort of similar pendulum type project. Or you might just want a blast from the past perpetual motion type ornament because they're actually quite nice.